You ready for this game tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a second. I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to rest tonight. Ah, come on, man. You can't rest players. Not tonight. What? Why? Because this game was a second round preview. <laughs> I think you have your days mixed up. What? What? <laughs> tonight can't be a second round preview. I play you. That's hurtful. Yeah, but accurate. Low quality fans for high quality Bruins team. That is a dub. It is 10 p.m. I have a 4 a.m. flight tomorrow to Boston to celebrate this dub and also to watch a game. This is a good dub. This is a strong win against a team that you might be seeing again real soon if they can get past the first round, which maybe this is the year. I think I think a, a, a playoff series against this team, against Toronto, is a coin flip. And I know we've been dominant, we've been great and everything all season. That is a really, really good team. They're top 10 in goals scored, in goals allowed. They have a really great power play. They have an okay penalty kill, but our power play kind of sucks anyway, so that offsets. You worry about their goaltending. I mean, Samsonov is, is their guy who had a great, great game tonight. I don't think we challenged him enough, honestly, but he's clearly going to be their starter once the playoffs comes around, and you're just not sure if he's the guy to get them deep in the playoffs. But that's a really good team, man. They do a lot of things really well. This is an impressive game by them, and we had a good amount of our lineup that was available to us. Um which we'll actually, we'll, we'll dive right into the, the lines in a second. The Leafs do have some injuries going on right now. Muzzin is out, Mete's out, Robertson out, Dahlstrom out, Matt Murray, of course, is out. Um, I don't think they rested a lot of guys. We didn't really rest a lot of guys either. Swayman gets a start, so no Olmark for this one. But we are missing Krejci because he's actually managing an injury that happened in practice, although it doesn't seem to be serious. Of course, Hall... He's actually skating full contact now, but he's not clear to play yet either. Uh, Felino and Forbore, of course, are still out. So that's going to leave... Oh, and Lauko is also hurt right now. So that leaves Zaka taking over the 2C role. Bertuzzi on his left on that second line. A shakeup in the bottom six. Freddy, Coyle, Hathaway being your third line. And then Greer, Nosek, Steen being your fourth. Orlov, Mack. Lindholm, Carlo, Grizz, Clifton are your defensive pairings. This might be what we see in the playoffs. I don't know. I still can't get a, get a vibe on this. And again, I'm going to be in Boston this weekend. We get in midday tomorrow. Um, if you guys do want to try to see me or whatever, just either hit me up on the Discord or, or message me on one of the social medias, Twitter, and stuff, stuff like that, uh, and I will do my very best. There's not a lot of time, but... I will certainly do my best to come say hi because I love seeing you guys and, and meeting you guys. It's really fun for me. That is win number 61, by the way. 62 wins being the all-time record for most wins in a season. We have four more games to try to tie it. and We just have to win two out of our last four to beat it. Again, I've kept saying that I don't care that much. I still want us to rest, guys. I think even with resting guys, we might be able to get there, fingers crossed, I don't know, knock on wood, we'll see what happens. But that is still just so crazy to me that we have 61 wins on the season. Just nuts and really exciting. You know what else they're saying? Liking, commenting, and subscribing. Nailed it, but let's talk about this game. Puck drops in the first 10 minutes are all Bruins. All Bruins. We are buzzing, but we're actually not doing that much. It's one of those like those moments where we have possession, we're moving around the offensive zone, we're feeding the puck across the crease, and oh, so close, but we're not connecting, and we're not putting a lot of pressure on Samsonov, like all the saves he's made, he had to make six or seven saves in the first ten minutes, and they're all on the chest, or right on the pads, so there's not like any challenging shots, we just have the possession, and the longer this went on, the more I was thinking, man... Toronto's doing a great job. They bend, they bend, they bend, but they keep you in front of them. They really do. And so the first 10 minutes was just, it felt like it was lopsided, but it really wasn't. 8.27 left of the first period. McAvoy is going to go for hooking. Uh, it's a little soft, but hey, it happens. We're going to kill it because our penalty kill 
it was pretty good. I don't know if you know this. This is pretty good. 527 left. Lafferty wrecks Grizz into the boards, but it's Grizz is aware of where he is the whole time. He sees him coming shoulder to shoulder. It's just a very awkward hit into the boards. And so it looks worse than it was. And Greer immediately skates over to Lafferty. They both shed him. They go at each other. Lafferty gets the takedown, but Greer got some good shots in there. And then they call the instigator on Greer, which makes sense with how they've been calling it this season in the past couple seasons, honestly. I still find it weird that if both guys shed him, just because one guy approached the other, but both guys shed him at the same time, it feels like that's a, a hockey fight, right? Whereas if one guy sheds them and starts pulling the other guy's gear off and nailing them, that's more of an instigator. That's my opinion on it, but I think they've really been calling it as whoever literally, by definition, instigates. That means skating over and saying, let's do this. So he's going to get the extra instigator. He's gonna, We're going to go to the penalty kill. We kill it. And that's your first period. Physical, high-flying. Bruins had the better side of the shot totals and the chances, but just couldn't really connect. And the second period starts, and it kind of felt like the second period Bruins are back, for those of you who watched last year's season. The Leafs really dominated us throughout the second period, but we're 443 in. Kerfoot's going to go for high sticking to the power play, and it's terrible. It's really bad. And Marshand just gets his start on the wrong foot, but just an awful turnover that goes right down the ice. And... <sighs> It's bad, and I know that we keep talking about what if they're kind of waiting to the postseason to wake up. Great. They just stand still, man. They just stand still and try to do the same thing over and over again. And I, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to tell grown men, like, guys, move! Do something! It's fine. We're going to move on. 9.32 left. Fantastic goaltending on each end. It's a crazy bounce off the back wall that leads to DeBrusque. Samson's looking the other way. DeBrusque gets the puck at the left corner. He's skating right in on the net. And Samsonov somehow kicks out that leg and stops it. And then right back the other way, a perfectly executed three on two, gets the puck on Nylander's stick right in front of Swayman, but he tracked it the entire way, swallows that up. During that play, Bergeron and McAvoy accidentally collide, and McAvoy goes into the boards, and he's shaken up, and he ends up playing one more shift and then done for the night for an upper body injury. After the game, thank bejesus, after the game, Monty did say he does not think it's anything major. This was a precautionary move. I'm super fine with that. Give McAvoy the rest of the night off. We're not risking anything here. This game doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. I know some of you are talking about the record, but as far as this season, this playoffs, that's not worth to bring that guy back. So McAvoy had the rest of the night off and really hope that that, that is true, that it is not anything major. But unfortunately, shortly after that, 827 left of the period, and this is just a massive breakdown. Pasta is in our zone and throws a telegraphed, lazy, soft, blatant turnover pass turnover into the neutral zone it's a turnover Lafferty collects gets to the right side of the blue line about to take the zone and just dumps it across the ice to the left corner it bounces out it like just wraps it around basically bounces out stays on that left wall left wall and Lafferty just goes right to the net right Bertuzzi was the one right next to him and just was like all right bye and starts skating towards the other side of the ice and all of our defense were on the other side of the ice and all of our forwards were on the other side of the ice and of course, what that means is the guy who gets the puck, Zach Aston Reese, then has a wide open Lafferty for a backdoor tap in with no one on the same side of the ice as him. Like, this pass could have happened, and Lafferty could have done six different moves to deke Swayman out of the net and then put it in if he wanted to. He had all the time in the world. Either way, it's an easy tap in for him, and it's 1 0, a total breakdown defensively shortly after that 728 left Hathaway gets need by Shen this was a bit of a weird call to me too honestly because it it looked it just looked a little funny I didn't get a lot of looks at it honestly but we're gonna go to the power play and we're gonna we're gonna not do anything on it pasta was hell-bent on us not doing anything on this one because he had three turnovers in the first minute of the power play all three of them ended up back in our zone yeah yeah, I love pasta, but cheesy peats, that's tough. And we're going to go to the third period, down a goal, 
But that's okay, because the third period is our period. And 4.52 in, Martian is going to go in for interference because of the dumbest, stupid, dumb, idiot thing that he could do. He's right next to Giordano. Puck's nowhere near him. Looks like the puck's going to start coming their way, and he stick lifts him. But by stick lifts him, I mean he sends this thing to the fucking moon. He just whap, and the stick is gone. And I get the whole, like, hold on to your stick. You're a professional hockey player for Geo, but this had some heat on it, man. So anyway, Martian goes for interference because you can't do that. We are going to kill off that penalty. 8-16 in. Coil tripped by McCabe. We're going to go to the power play. No dice. And it's awful. 8-28 left. Carlo needed this play because, honestly, I didn't love a lot of his game up to this point. We are pinning them into their zone, and they finally get possession and decide to whip it out, right? Get it over over the defense, just dump it, get the ice in, whatever. Just get the pressure off. And so they try to go over Carlo, and Carlo just whoosh, drops it and immediately smacks it, like in one motion. On the blue line, by the way, he is on the blue line. Grabs it out of the air, puts it on his stick. Flings it to Coyle, who's going to skate around to that left circle. The defensive structure that was so good all night for Toronto was not able to recover. And Coyle just has all the time to stare down Samsonov. Goes low glove using Riley and Steen as screens. And that is going to... It's, Samsonov's going to get a piece. But not enough. That is your game tying goal. And that's going to put us to overtime. And in overtime, there's a little bit of drama. Because 24 seconds in... Marshan has a wide open net, and he gets hooked by Riley, forcing it to go wide. Because Marshan is completely snake bitten right now. And then, the first 26 seconds of that power play, it's four on three, and we just, Lindholm and Marshan play catch, back and forth, 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 feed pasta for a one-timer. That's all it was! We wasted 30 seconds of the power play doing that. We just moved the puck between two players back and forth, and then still went to the exact thing they knew we were going to go for. Just awful. Awful, awful. There's no puck movement at all. It, obviously, there's just passengers. No, no movement of the players at all. Anyway, so that doesn't work. With 49 seconds left of the power play, both centermen look to have played the puck with their gloves. Zaka gets knocked down. Kampf is over him. It does look intentional to me that Zaka bumped this with his glove. That's not usually going to get called. You kind of have to like put your hand over it, which Kampf then really does get his hand right onto the puck. As a centerman, you're not allowed to do that. That is a penalty. That's an infraction. So they call Zaka for it, review it, like talk about it. Don't like review it, review it, but talk about it and then end up waving it for both teams. Kind of okay with this because at the end of the day, I think both centermen touched it on purpose. And I'd rather them just be like, both of them did it. We're waving it off. We don't feel like putting two more guys in the box. Like, that's it. Uh, Leafs fans are really upset that they reviewed it. Um, I, I don't I don't know. I think I think if it, it was on the other foot, they would probably agree with it. But that's okay. So, we're still on four on three. And as the penalty is expiring, we're finally moving the puck around a little bit. And Pasta decides to move. He decides not to just stand in one spot. And he glides slightly higher than he usually is in that left circle. Puck gets fed to him. He unleashes the hammer. Top glove. 2-1. Final. 61 wins. But game notes are kind of funny because my first game note before I saw the news, before I listened to Monty after the game, was I don't give a shit. How is McAvoy? Is he okay? So now that we know that McAvoy is likely okay, we can feel a lot better. Marshand. Super snake bit. 14 straight games without a goal. I'd love to see him turn it on in the playoffs. We'll see what we get. I'm not overly worried about him, but if we're going to make a deep run, he's got to be involved. So uh, something to watch. And then the last note really was, there's a lot to harp on in this game. I mean, defensively, I, I want to give Toronto a ton of credit. They really did play an excellent defensive game. But the failed clearances, a lot by Carlo, Martian and Pasternak turning over the puck like crazy, lack of board play, poor power play play, just is a ton to harp on. But there's no point. We've got, this is the weirdest vibes. We talk about it every year. These are weird vibes at the end of the season because you're not playing four a lot. So I'm willing to just wash it away. This is a nice win. Let's just get through the remaining games of the regular season healthy. Go into game one against whoever the hell we're playing. 
and start the run there. So I'm not I'm not going to get overly critical about these efforts. I just can't. It just doesn't make sense to me. All right, guys, it does it for me. Like, comment, subscribe. I am in Boston tomorrow. I'm super excited about it. It is late already. I need to get some sleep so that I can wake up early and go to the airport. I'm excited. I have a chance to watch a game where just maybe they'll tie the all-time wins record, which is just insane to think about. Go Bees. Go Bees!